I just want to go over the play date system real fast. So uh, Jason was asking me how I felt about this system, and after going over it, um, I do like it. I was a little annoyed with the system out, out of the box because they want you to connect to the internet. I kind of just wanted to kind of get into the system and play some games, but it had to connect to the internet, set up my account, and all that stuff. And that took me, I think, around like 15, 20 minutes to get it set up properly. And then there was only two games on there waiting for me, so I thought I was going to get the full Season 1 because Season 1, as of right now, I think I think it has 12 to 20 games. So I was expecting all those games, but the games are released to you periodically uh, for free. But still, I was, I was since they're mostly out, I figured they'd be ready for me. But anyways, I actually like the system, but I think it's more of a development type system for people to create ideas for certain games. I see a lot of that on there, and that's pretty impressive from what I've seen on their website. I don't know if I could like uh, justify the price tag this has for most uh, like casual gamers, but for developers, I think it's well worth it. Uh, it's a very interesting system to develop games for, I would say. I do want to apologize about the shaky cam or the shaky uh, hands on this system. I didn't have the right setup to show you guys the games for this, but if you want to see a good review of this, uh, definitely check out Jason's review of it. Uh, he did an excellent job going talking about the system and the games it came with. Here's Asher Striker Gunvolt 3. Now, I've been waiting for this game ever since it was announced last year. And I'm, as soon as it got a retail release, I was pretty much on it. So this game plays in English, of course. And um, if you played, I want to, of course, I'm going to compare it to the first two games. But if you haven't played those, maybe you played the Mega Man ZX games. It's very similar to those type games, I would say, or even Mega Man Zero. But this third game really steps it up in the gameplay department as uh, the new character you play as. She could throw these cards to lock onto the enemies. Kind of like you, Gunvolt did in the first game, but she could actually, like... Uh, she she kind of focuses on more, mostly on melee attacks, so she could like zoom right over to that uh, that enemy that she's targeted, and like if you target a bunch of enemies at, at once, like three enemies, you'll slash all over the screen to do maximum damage. It's really awesome and insane. You can switch between characters, but I'm gonna tell you guys right now, Gunvolt is overpowered, man. It's pretty insane. Like you only get to play as him temporarily, depending on certain circumstances, I would say, because. Uh, Sometimes if you get killed in battle, you'll get he'll get revived and he'll just be this ma maximum force that'll just tear up enemies on the screen. Um, it's it's just really really a good game, guys. Definitely something if you're a Gunvolt fan, you guys will want to check out. I love indie crates. I love the work they do with the 2D sprites, uh, the action games, the music, boss battles. I mean, these are some of my favorite indie games, and definitely um, I, you guys should check these out if you haven't played them yet. The action is all over the place, and one of my favorite levels in the game has you riding a missile, uh, trying try to stop this missile from hitting your base. So, like, you have to jump from missile to missile. It, it's pretty, like, crazy. So, it's de definitely one of my favorite levels. Uh, definitely, I feel like you guys will like the action in this game. <laughs> There's no way an arcade would have traps like those. You must be using a security box to make them. Super easy with my overclock. I'll show you to this. So here is Death Smiles Part 1 and 2. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but a while back, I got the Japanese versions of these because I had no idea that these were going to be released in America. I didn't want to like take the chance on waiting, and sure enough, it did. So I actually got rid of those copies uh, recently and got these American copies. They come with some uh, DLC codes, I think, for like some costumes or something like that or some music. I can't remember what it was, but either way, this is an awesome collection because it comes with both games in English. The second game was never released in English in a physical format. Uh, it was only released as digital uh, on the Xbox Live service in English. I don't know if a lot of people knew that. 
But a little history about me and Death Smiles. This was the game that got me back into shoot 'em ups. The first game I thought was fantastic. Uh, the music, the boss battles, that crazy cow that chases you. What, what's that other level that's crazy? The, the final level with the castle is amazing. Like, oh, I love looking at that level. Uh, just, this is what I would say is one of the signature games if you wanted to get somebody in the shoot 'em ups. Uh, definitely uh, tell them to check out Death Smiles. Part two is okay. I don't like how they went with the. I don't like how they went with some of the graphics in this game, but it does have a Christmas theme to it, so that's kind of cool, like a cool game to play during Christmas. Still, it's a, it's a solid game as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter because you're getting both games in the collection. The first game is the is the signature in the series. I say that's the best one. And the second game, if you want more, there's that one as well. Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. Now, back when Wild Guns um, Reloaded had came out, I knew that Natsume was going to go after all their games and kind of re-release them uh, like in an in a HD format, I would say, or just remakes pretty much. And then I was right about that. That started to happen. And the newest one is Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. Now, this game is fun, but it's hard. I'm like, damn, dude. Like, you cannot even strafe in this game. It's like, dude, like, it just makes it very difficult. Now, I, I'm... I want to unlock the very easy mode, but I haven't been able to do that yet. I haven't even been able to get past the first level. That's why I wish these games were online so you could play co-op with somebody. But um, I don't know. I, I just got to get better, guys, and, and I will. It's just like I was just expecting the first level to kind of like, you know, be a little bit easier, you know, break you in. But no, it does not. It's tough. And one of the reasons why it's so tough because enemies take a lot of damage, especially the boss, and you can't even stray from this game. I hate that. I wish they would add that feature, that movement for your character, but they have not in this game. So everywhere you go, you have to walk in that direction to shoot. And it's, it's just annoying. But if you get past those type of complaints, uh, you'll definitely have a lot of fun with this one. It's a really good game. Happy it's out. I just, oh man, I gotta get past the first level. But <laughs> definitely something I think you guys will wanna keep your eyes on. Now, next up is the Monster World Collection. So, um, you know, I always wanted to try these games out, uh, at least the first three. I, I played the fourth game, and the fourth game, uh, Monster World 4, is actually my favorite and the game I've played the most. But the other three games, I tried to play them, and I just couldn't get into them. I feel like these games are the type of games you kind of had to come up with in a way. You know, I, I just, out of all these games, I'd rather play the fourth game. And the, even when it comes to the fourth game, i rather play the remake instead. Now you never know, I may change my mind about the first three games if I get a little bit, little bit more time to play them, maybe I can get into them more. But um, definitely the fourth game is where it's at on this collection. So if you haven't played these, I, I would say most people will just hop into the fourth game. I think that's the best one that'll kind of get you hooked on the series possibly. Next up is the quarry. Now, um, I was thinking about actually doing a review on this game, but I was like, nah, I'm good. If you guys want to see a good review on this game, uh, definitely check out Joel's video. Uh, he did an in-depth review about this game. Um, going over a little detail, the game is very well done. It's very story-driven. You actually really like the characters. You actually come to care about them, um, and you want them all to live. Now, usually when I play these type of games, 
I know the, the decisions to make. I know how to keep everybody alive. But I, I messed up in this one. And I got one of the girls killed. And then at the end, I got somebody else killed. So I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. But they, they, they kind of trick you, though, with the certain decisions. So um, this is definitely a good game that has a lot of replayability with it. it you're going you're gonna to like this one, folks. You're going to at least play it twice, I would say, at least. Um, so... You want to get the best ending because the characters you just you just want you just want you want them to make it out. At least there's only one character I didn't really like in the game, and that's because that was Josh because he's being a beta. But I mean, I guess they got to have one of those in these type of games. So, um, but the story is very well done. Um, like I said, it's a it's really a cool game. Definitely a good experience. I was kind of disappointed though because the online function wasn't available uh, when this game was released and it said it had online kick playability pretty much. So they patched that in later, which that was kind of annoying, but still you can play it online now with friends, uh, enjoy the story. Um, I can't, I don't want to say too much about it. I mean, cause it's, it's a, it's an awesome surprise. If you played until dawn, you'll kind of know what to expect here. If you played that game, you're familiar with that one. I mean, people were calling this game the spiritual successor to that game. So um, you'll have a good experience with this one, folks. Here's Gyarus. Uh, now, this was released years ago on the Sega Genesis, but it was re-released by Retrobit in a collector uh, kind of edition format. Pretty awesome. Um, I've already talked about this this game in, in a video before. You can check that one out. I'll leave a link in the description or somewhere around here. But um, this is definitely one of the harder shooters out there. I it mean, it's... it's it's tough. You got to pay attention at all times. You got to know what weapons to use on certain enemies. Um, you have to do all that stuff. But it is rewarding in in a way. Uh, and, and the rewarding part of this game to me is the storyline, the storyline cutscene. So, you know, you, if you want to follow the story, get good at this game, of course. But uh, it's definitely a tough one, guys. So um, let me know in the comments if, if this is a tough game for you. Because you know what's funny about this type of game is that when I'm playing it like solo, you know, I'm fine. But if I do it on a live stream, I get, I just, my, my skills are like diminished pretty much. Like I'm so nervous. And I actually did a live stream of Retrobit and I barely got to the second level. It was horrible. I was so disappointed. I'm usually able to get to the fourth level in this game. And I just, man, I just felt like I didn't come through. But anyways, guys, uh, let me know how you feel about this re-release. Here's Maluka by First Press Games. Now... Man, um, going into this game, it's very similar to games like The Legend of Zelda. So if you're a Zelda fan, I feel like a lot of people could get into this game. For me, though, the game in the beginning was missing a hook. You know, I do not want to start off in a desert in, in the beginning of a game, in a barren desert, trying to discover stuff. You know, that just uh, kind of annoys me in a way, except if it's Prince of Persia, uh, the one that the 2008 remake. That was freaking awesome. As a matter of fact, I need to revisit that game someday. But anyways, going back to this game, guys. I, I, I it, The hook, it, it didn't pull me in in the beginning, but I see the potential this game has. So, um, like I said, it's very similar to Zelda. You create your own combos. Um, you collect certain items. You open up puzzles. You know, stuff like that. So, um, like I said, if you guys have played this one, let me know in the comments uh, what you think about this one. What am I getting into in this game? Is it worth it? Because, um, like I said, I see the potential, but I just hope it's not wasted. So, we'll see. Capcom Fighting Collection. So I talked about this in a recent video of games I'm playing currently. And Capcom did such an amazing job on this collection. I Honestly, I wish we would have got this years ago. But still, with them releasing something this awesome, I mean, this 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 collection is very well done. I mean, it's arcade ports, uh, which is like what we want. And I feel like um, they, they're just on the right track, I would say. So hopefully the next, if they do another one of these, I'm hoping for the X-Men games. Like I'm talking about X-Men all the way up to X-Men vs. Street Fighter. Well, no, X-Men, Marvel vs. Street Fighter. Because we have most of the Marvel games, Marvel vs. Vers games. So if they could do that, that would be freaking fantastic. I don't know if they could make that happen with the rights and everything. But, man, those games are just collecting dust, I feel like. I mean, I know you could play them in the 1-Up and also on emulators or whatever. But, man, just to have a, like a real compilation of those games would be fantastic. 
Here's Asterix Oblix Slaps Them All. Um, I picked this game up because I played Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge and I was so impressed with that game, I started looking at beat em ups again. And mainly beat em ups that had really good presentations, like where the graphics look really like impressive. So I saw this one, decided to pick it up. Now, unfortunately, this game is not online. Now, they could have made up with that by having an AI control partner to help you during the levels. That would have been cool. But you can switch between the characters as you're playing solo during the level. It doesn't change too much. I mean, the game does get tiresome after the first two levels because most of the levels seem like they're you're going through the same area pretty much. But still, I love the attempt they made at making this game something something that stands out a little bit, especially with the graphics. Now here's the Castlevania Anniversary Collection. Now, man, you would think that something like this would never exist the way Konami had treated people years ago, but finally, something like this is here, and it consists of eight Castlevania games. Now, the games that I'm going to be playing on here the most is, uh, is between Castlevania um, Bloodlines and Castlevania, well, Super Castlevania. Now, which do I think is the better game? For many years, I thought the Super Castlevania 4 was the better game, but to me now, I would say Bloodlines is a much better game. You know, well, it's I won't say it's a much better game, but it's the game I definitely choose to play out of the, out of the, out of the, the two games mostly. So, um, you guys, let me know what you think about that in the comments. But anyways, um, you get two of the Game Boy games. I was surprised they didn't put Legends in here. I mean, I know Legends was kind of like looked down upon over the years for the Game Boy, but still, I think that should have been put in here. But Anyways, guys, uh, let me know if you have this collection and let me know what you think about playing these games. A lot of old school arcade games are coming back and you know it really feels nice seeing this stuff now here's snow brothers and uh, Nick and Tom special for the switch now uh, I've talked about this game before and it pretty much plays like um, you know between bubble bobble uh, little rainbow islands uh, stuff like that you know you'll know what you're getting into here these games are actually a lot of fun and definitely I feel like it's something that a lot of people will be able to get into now I can't say I really care for the way they kind of did the graphics in this game too much I wish they would have just kind of just in a way just ported the arcade game but still I'm happy with what I'm seeing here um, you know the gameplay is still pretty much the same so it's definitely something I think a lot of people could probably look into and also too when you buy the game it actually comes with some stickers and some extras so that's nice so it's nice to know that this doesn't just come with that little you open up the game it's just that white background with the cart only you know they add a little extra in here so um uh, definitely um i would say guys keep up with clear river games um they've already released death smiles uh, they i think they were the ones that released the retail version of hunt down as well so um they're pretty much from what i've seen amazon exclusives so um Definitely um, check them out on there. Now here is the Klonoa Reverie series. So if you have not played the Klonoa games, ugh, you have missed out on something special here. Now they pretty much didn't sell too well and uh, even though we there's plenty of games for the series out there they're not really well known I would say this collection puts together pretty much the best games in the series even though they could have added a couple more on here to make this collection a little bit better mainly the Game Boy Advance games but the first two games are on here and they're redone very well I would say I would say um, the first Klonoa game is kind of like based off of the Wii version well at least I feel like it is you know Klonoa in that version looks like a teenager and but in the PS1 version he looked more like a kid they went 
went with the kid look in this remake. So, um, I don't know. You guys judge. Let me know. But uh, my favorite in the series is actually Klonoa 2, and I love the way that one looks. These games are very heartfelt, a lot of fun, and hopefully with the sales of this series right now, I feel like we'll get possibly a Klonoa 3, you know, because um, these, these the physical version of this game is actually selling pretty well. So hopefully that'll show Namco that we have interest in the series again. Oh, I've always had interest in the series. I've been wanting Klonoa 3 for a while. So hopefully that will make that happen with the sales of this game. So I've already talked about the Kyle Bunker collection in a review I did. I think this game is worth owning, of course, but you guys know about the online problems this game has from release, so just be aware of that. But if you're going to play couch co-op, I think these games are fun. There is a bit of input lag for some of the games, but for casual players, I don't think they'll really be able to notice it. Um, but mainly what you're going to get the, this collection for is for the two arcade games. So I, I think those, as long as those are like play well, I think people will be happy. Uh, just hopefully the online is fixed by the time of this video or I don't know what's going on with the online. I got to look into it a little bit more, but I think this collection is definitely worth having. All right, so here is Jorge Hugh and Friends. So this is very, this is a shoot 'em up very similar to Magical Chase. Now... I do like this game, but it was a little bit slow paced for me. You know, I feel like it, I don't know, it just, I like the level up system, how during the level you could go into a shop and like pick upgrades for your, your ship, but pretty much, I don't know, I just, I was just sucking at this game and maybe that's what threw me off. I just need to figure out a strategy that works for me in this game, but still, um, a cool physical release. I mean, you guys know what I say, uh, getting a shmup as a physical is always a good thing, so happy with this game's release. But I got I need more practice. So uh, keep your eye out for this one if you like what you're seeing here. Here's Jimmy Johnson's Anything with the Engine. Uh, this is a kart racer game that I had no idea existed. I think my buddy Ty had told me about this game. I don't remember who told me about this one actually, but uh, me and Jason went game hunting again and uh, went to another castle and happened to find this game. I, I it was it was kind of crazy because at the end, like I couldn't find anything in the store I wanted. Then I just thought of this game and I was like, thank goodness they had it. So, but anyways, going into the gameplay, um, you put these weird like like carts together and they're they're hilarious looking but um you you pretty much race and the game is a lot of fun uh what i like about this game is that the tracks actually uh change during during the like the like certain parts of it so you're not always going to be on the like the track's not always going to be the same so i love that kind of very similar to a sonic racing transform but uh definitely if you're in the kart racers i would consider this one a hidden gem here's gunvolt chronicles luminous avenger 9 part 2 <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy title, but uh, this is very similar to Azure Striker Gunvolt Part 3 in any of the Gunvolt games. Uh, you play as Copen, and pretty much a little bit of the story, you get transferred to another world, you find some other beings, they're pretty hostile, you're trying to find your way back home. I felt like the uh, workers in this game, where those are the enemy types that you fight, uh, are were pretty awesome. I think, I think they were very well done. My favorite out of the bunch that you fight is Brigade. I think Brigade is pretty awesome, especially if you fight them on hard mode. Uh, definitely a worthy boss battle, um, but all of them are really good. Man, this is another action-packed game. I think a lot of people will like. Uh, I was thinking about doing a review on this game, but I figured, you know what? It's just uh, there's plenty of good reviews out there. Uh, I mean, you guys are seeing it here now, so I'll just talk about it briefly here. But I think this is my favorite Gumball game right now in the series. Uh, that's probably people are looking at me like I'm crazy, but man, I think this is the best one so far. So. Um, 
yeah, you guys let me know what you think about that. But uh, definitely, I would say pick this one up if you have the chance. It's a lot of fun. Um, the music is great. Uh, the battles are just epic to me. Um, I feel like it's just like it's just it's just a throwback to the games I like. You know, like I don't know if you guys noticed, or maybe you should notice already, but I'm a big Mega Man fan, and I love the Mega Man X series. I love the ZX series, even the Zero Zero series as well. So um, definitely uh, try this game out if you get a chance. Ballistic Shield. You better be ready, Ungar! Bringing it back! Ah! Go! Fire! 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 Forward march! I will hold the line! This is it for you! I'll erase you! Let's go, Vespa! Yes, brother! Connection! Complete! Yeah! Secret Onslaught! This is our true power! So, I've been rebuilding my Sega Saturn collection for a couple years now, and recently I've got a couple of heavy hitters, the first being Twiggle Star Sprites. Now, I had this before I sold my Saturn years ago, and I, I love this game. This is a really cool shoot 'em up It's a verse shoot 'em up so you can see the, the dual screens and you're going against another opponent. The game is a lot of fun, and uh, the Saturn version actually adds voice acting if you care about the story, but of course the gameplay is where it's at, because I don't understand the story at all. But if you want to avoid getting the Saturn version, the game's available on the PSN store, uh, a part of a compilation. I think it goes for around five bucks right now with a couple other games, so uh, definitely check it out there. But I'm very happy to have this game back in my collection. All right, here is Puri Cura Daisaikasen. Oh, man. Uh, I just, yeah, that's, that's the title. So, yeah, go with it. But um, this is one of the games I added to my Saturn collection recently that I never had before. And I always wanted this game, but I always was too cheap to buy it. You know, I was like, oh, man, that's, that's too much money. And then, of course, the game rose in price over the years. And I said, you know what, now I just it's finally time to bite the bullet because I want to play this game. So I picked it up. And this is an isometric action game that really feels like a lost art. Now, I don't know how this game did in arcades back in Japan, but it's just, it's, the game is kind of one of a kind pretty much. The only game I could say that's similar to this to me is probably Remy Lore, but a lot of you guys probably haven't heard of that game either. But either way, this is an arcade game, a lot of fun, co-op two players. Um, Unfortunately, as of now, this is one of those games that kind of lives and dies on the Saturn, you know. So uh, I know you could play it like on a, a emulator or the arcade version on emulator, but this game it seems like it'll never get ported to some, another a modern system, unfortunately. And I think more people should be able to play this game because it's actually a lot of fun. But anyways, guys, if you, if any of you have played this game, let me know what you think about it. Here's Panzer Dragoon. So this is a remake of the Sega Saturn on rail shooter. And if you guys haven't played that game, it is freaking amazing. And this remake, to me, in my opinion, does it justice. 
Now, originally, I thought they were just going to port the Sega Saturn version over to newer modern systems, but unfortunately, they couldn't do that because they, guess what? They lost the source code, and that is a trending thing they're having with a lot of Sega titles, unfortunately. But luckily, they took some interest to see if people wanted to see this game remade, and they made it happen. I'm, I think they're working on part two possibly now, and hopefully after that, we could get uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga, because that's an amazing game. So um, if you like Unreal Shooter, definitely check this game out. The intro is so nostalgic watching it, how it plays out. It is so cool how you just watch like a cinematic with it. No voice acting going on. You just like watch the actions of the people and it just that's, you, that tells you the story pretty much. Very well done. Here's Monster Crown. Uh, this game is very similar to gameplay uh, to the Pokemon games. And if people get mad at me and say, hey, Reggie, why aren't you into the Pokemon games? I, I don't know. I'm just not into them. But Monster Crown seems to be a Pokemon-type game that has a dark story to it. So, you know, there's that. So that that's what kind of pulled me into buying this game. So uh, I've talked about this game already on my channel and on Jason's channel before. So, uh, like I said, if you like Pokemon-type games that look like the Game Boy uh uh, color or well, the Game Boy games, of course, Game Boy Color games. Uh, this will be something you might want to check out. Title Milestone. Now, this has 10 games from the title of like game history, the early games, but the problem with this series is that I feel like they gave us too little in this collection. If you want to get people hooked on these type of collections, you got to bring out your heavy hitters. You know, they just brought out a lot of earlier releases, and uh, some of them are actually good. I like Fairy Tale Land, of course, Ninja Warriors is good. But other than that, I can't really recommend the rest of these games. I mean, there's Elevator Action. That's a good one, too. And then Crack and Pop. It's like kind of like the precursor to Bubble and Bobble. But, um, yeah, like I said, like I talked about this already before. So if you want to pick this up, I think it's going for like 20 bucks right now. So um, maybe they'll bring a better uh, Volume 2 out, hopefully, if this sells like well enough. Here is Radical Bikers. Now, I found out about this game by accident. I was watching a video of a pizza delivery guy that, that almost hit a guy on a bike, and the guy was trying to, like, fight him and everything like that. And then I went to look for the video on uh, YouTube, and this game popped up. So I said, man, as soon as I saw it, I had to have it. So pretty much this is a racing game where you race against another uh, biker, your pizza delivery people racing to get to your destination, and you're going through pretty much, like, traffic and oncoming traffic. And... Uh, the way that you actually beat your opponent in this game, you, you're not going to beat them straight forward. You usually have to take shortcuts, or usually you'll get speed boost options. But I, I mainly find that the shortcuts will help you win most races. Um, the game is actually a lot of fun. It may seem hard at first, but you'll definitely get into it after a couple of matches. You'll start to get a feel for it. So uh, I would say keep your eyes out for this one if you have the ability to play uh, import games. And next up, we have Rainbow Billy. So this is an adventure game, and I believe this is a GameStop exclusive. It might be sold on another website as well, but I remember this, like, someone was telling me this was a GameStop exclusive, so I went ahead and picked this one up. And one of the main reasons I picked it up, because I thought it would, the graphics look similar to Cuphead. So I was like, you know what, look, this might be kind of cool. So it basically plays Billy. You're trying to restore color to the world. And it's pretty much like an adventure game. Well, not just a straight adventure game. This is what I would call an adventure puzzle game. Because there are some puzzles in this game. And they can stump you for a little bit, but not too hard at all. Uh, definitely doesn't mess up the gameplay flow. I'm about an hour into this game so far, and I actually like it. You know, for $20, I think it was well worth it. But if any of you guys have played this game, let me know how you feel about it. Here's Metal Max Xeno Reborn. I, I originally was going to do an unboxing of this uh, collector's edition I got, and I still have that footage as well. But um, I got this game from P-Cube, and um, the only way to get this collector's edition is to order from their website. But man, this game reminds me so much of Metal Saga. Uh, I mean, like I feel like it's a spiritual successor to that game, and it probably is. But anyways, going into the game, a big war has happened, and the game starts in the aftermath, pretty much. So you're kind of picking up the pieces. So you start as a character, uh, you find a tank, and there's a home base where um, they decide to let you in only if you beat some enemies outside of their base. And once you do that, they let you in, you get to know the other characters, and then that's where the game starts from, pretty much. It picks up from that point on. 
for some reason, you know, um, I know how, you guys know how I feel about games that start off in the desert pretty much, but this game was a bit different, especially that you have wheels. You got yourself a tank, so uh, I think that was pretty cool. And you can upgrade the tank during the game, of course, all that stuff. But what I really like about this game is that it gets to the point pretty fast. I mean, like, I, I would say within 15 minutes, you're already at your home base and you're meeting the other characters. So you already feel like you're getting your feet settled in pretty much. So uh, if you have a chance to play this game, I say definitely pick it up. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the PS2 era of games. So um, definitely check this one out if you have the chance to. And next up, we have House of the Dead Remake. So, um, this was another game that um, Sega lost the source code for. Um, the original copy of this game for the Sega Saturn goes for a lot of money. I can remember how much it was, but man, it's a lot of money. So, they ended up remaking this game, and I really enjoyed it. I was kind of upset, though. By the time I got this version of the game, I found out that the PS4 version is going to be released later. I would have chose to have that version over this, but hey... I guess I'll have both of them in the future. But anyways, if you like on-rail shooters, House of the Dead is where it's at. It's very well done. It's a lot of fun. Um, not much really else to say about it. You know, uh, rail shooters are really, I don't want to say they're all the same, but, you know, just action-packed and crazy. So um, if you like rail shooters, uh, definitely check this one out. Sophie. Are you okay? I was so scared. Here's Blazing Chrome, the Pixel Love Edition. Now, I was originally going to do an unboxing video for this game, but I figured this game's been out for a while, so I'm just going to like skip and just show you guys uh, what's in the package real fast and then go over some gameplay. Now, shout out to Pix and Love for putting this together. Uh, when I opened up this package, it really felt like it was like a super, like I was opening a Super Nintendo game pretty much. And that's what Blazing Chrome pretty much feels like. It's a throwback to old school retro games, mainly old school uh, running gun type games. One of the main things I was happy this package came with was a soundtrack. And they're not doing the jewel case soundtracks anymore, it seems like, with a lot of these uh, collector's editions. They got the little, like, the sleeve that has some art of the game on the cover. So, very cool looking. But uh, going into the gameplay, uh, if you haven't played this game, it's very pretty much uh, a Contra-type game. Uh, more so, I would say, Contra Hardcore than anything. Uh, but it's a, it's a game that I think everybody will like. And if you guys remember back a couple years back, me and Jason actually played this live. It was our first time playing this game, I believe. And I'm, I think we made it to the second level. I think we, we, we did all right for our first time playing. But um, the game definitely takes some getting used to. Uh, but it's a fun game. And it has an easy mode, so you get used to things. So I recommend playing on easy first and then kind of getting past that and then playing normal and um, playing on hard mode. Here's Cotton Reboot Collector's Edition. This was created by Strictly Limited, this packaging. And, um, man, they went all out. And, um, you know, I actually, like, get upset because Strictly Limited, like, sometimes they're slow on sending out stuff. But I was, pretty, I was pretty impressed with this, so I forgave them on the shipping speed on this one. If you have not played Cotton Reboot yet, you owe it to yourself. Um, this game is freaking fantastic. Uh, it brings new life into the series. Um, I don't know how popular it was back in the day, but at least I knew about it. Um, but I never heard anybody else talking about Cotton. But now I feel like... Uh, 
it's got more eyes on it. So uh, if you see cotton out there and you like shooting them up, definitely give this one a go. If you can't get this one, they have the American version on Amazon that you can check out. Here's Hermes, a limited edition. Um, this was sent to me by Video Games New York Soft. And uh, I, I vaguely remember seeing this game years ago. And it's, this is, I'll go over the gameplay in a little bit. But I like how this game was packaged with a VMU memory card. So if you guys remember, the Dreamcast uh, memory card, uh, that memory will get ate up pretty fast, especially if you had sports games. So having a memory card come with this is, is refreshing because I know all my VMUs are pretty much uh, filled up. So, uh, this version of the game I got was uh, done by Video Games New York Soft. And if you haven't heard of them, I talked about them in previous videos. They have a really good catalog of upcoming games. I'll make sure I'll leave their link in the description so you guys can check them out for yourselves. But they have PS4 games, PS5, Xbox, pretty much every system they got games for it. So, definitely check them out. So, this is a platform game where you play as a chef that's trying to catch a chicken. But while you're trying to catch that chicken... You have to eat food and use the bathroom. And now if you eat too much food, uh, you have to make sure you get to a bathroom immediately or else you'll, you'll literally bust through your pants. And <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Alright guys, just check this game out. <laughs> So here is Mayhem Brawlers. I didn't know about this game until my buddy Kyle hooked me up with this game. So pretty much this is like a precursor to like, well, it feels like it's a prototype for Streets of Rage 4. I feel like uh, like the same people worked on this game. Um, but this game you play as cops. And I like this game a lot because uh, you can kind of choose your path uh, where you go on the next level. So um, and it has this comic book style that kind of keeps you hooked to it. But the game suffers from online play, unfortunately. There's no online play, so um, I wish they would have came up with a like a like an AI uh, like, like partner to help you out uh, during the game, kind of like Final Fight 3. But it doesn't have that. But the game is story driven, and I still think it's well done. So um, Mayhem Brawlers is definitely something I would say you guys should pick up. So here's DNF Duel. This is based off a dungeon fighter, I believe, from, from I don't know, a few years back. But anyways, uh, this game was actually done by Arc Systems. You guys may know them from the Guilty Gear 
and Blaze Blue. This game took a while for me to get used to, but man, is it a lot of fun. Now, um, I know I talked about the auto combo system in fighting games, and this game definitely does not have that. So you have to learn a lot of the combos like just by like trial and error, pretty much. One thing I really like about this game, it seems like it's very story driven, but it's really balanced out with the character roster, I would say. I also like that this game actually names uh, the characters by their fighting style pretty much. So an example, uh, there's a girl, her name is Striker. She focuses on like karate, fast combos, kind of like a uh, Jam from freaking um, um, Guilty Gear, if you remember Jam from Guilty Gear. And also, um, the other guy, there's another character named Grappler. Man, whew, man, I had a hard time beating him in the story mode, but I finally got him. He is wild, but uh, you guys can kind of see what I mean. It, this is definitely a unique fighting game, and I'm interested in hearing your, your guys' thoughts about it. Here's Nasuki Chronicles uh, from First Press Games. So I, I believe this is the sequel to uh, uh, Giga Force. Um, but you guys in the comments let me know about that. Um, I, I had some fun with this one. Uh, I was kind of struggling in the beginning, you know, with the, how the how the power ups work in this game, pretty much. Uh, it's kind of like um, and when you start this game, I mean, you're not powered up at all, so you're gonna get pretty much tore up. But once you start powering up during the levels, even though you you'll get killed or even if you beat the levels, you'll always power up, so you can upgrade your weapons pretty much. And once you get your weapons to a certain level, the game becomes so much more fun. Um, I was actually having a good time with it. I was actually struggling a lot in the beginning. I was like, man, this game was rough, but like I said, once you start powering up the weapons, it becomes more playable. Now, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but this game originally came out uh, on the 360. Um, and uh, it was an import, of course. And it wasn't translated in English. And you, know, you only need to know the English if you want to know the story. Well, wait, you need to know the weapon types and everything, so that helps. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that games like this are getting released on the PS4 in physical format. So, good on First Press Games for making this happen. Here's Poa for the Game Boy Color. So this is another first press game. I love that they're releasing Game Boy games, man. I cannot get over that. Like that, ugh, like this. That we're still getting new Game Boy games to this day makes me a very happy man. But going into this game, it really reminds me of Trip World. If you remember Trip World for the Game Boy system, it kind of reminds me of that. The gameplay is pretty simple. Pretty much mostly platforming. Um, you can attack enemies by blowing a bubble at them. It affects some enemies, but some enemies are just uh, like easier to avoid instead of like going into battle with them. I don't know how a lot of people feel about Game Boy games, but the fact that they're still making them is very impressive. So uh, if you're looking for something new, uh, give this one a go. All right, so here is Perfect Dark for the Game Boy Color. I know a lot of you guys probably don't know this game exists, but it does. And I was told it was very similar to something like a maybe like a... Not like a low budget Metal Gear Solid game, but you know, like it, it has that kind of like like a sneaking premise to it. Now I love games that push uh, systems to their limits, and I heard that this game does that for the Game Boy Color, so I wanted to pick it up. And the first thing I noticed is that this game has voice acting in it. I was like blown away. And also the cartridge is one of the rumble cartridges out there, so put the battery in there, you get that rumble feature when you're doing certain events in the game. So looking forward to playing this game. I was told also that it's very similar to the first game where the story mode, but they changed the story up just enough to make it a bit different. So, man, good on Rare for making something like this. You would think that they would have skipped over the Game Boy Color, but they, I think they made something pretty solid here. Agent Dark, 
I didn't think you would make it past the attack helicopter. It didn't give me too much trouble. Who are you? My name is Danger. Max Danger. I'm an undercover agent for the Carrington Institute. I had been sent to update you on the mission. Okay, Max. What have you got for me? So I, I picked up Buffy the Vampire Slayer because someone told me that it actually plays like a survival horror. Now when I say survival horror, I'm talking about like the different camera angles, stuff like that. You have melee attacks. Uh, yeah, I think you have three different melee attacks in this game. You use your knife, you do kicks, and you do punches as well. But um, one of the things I've noticed in this game is the hit detection is off, you know, so... I'm going to try to see if I can get around that, you know, with a certain gameplay mechanic. But still, you know, that's kind of annoying. But that's the main reason I picked this game up. So if you guys have played Soul... Well, I almost call it Soul Sacrifice, but Buffy Vampire Sacrifice. Let me know your thoughts in this game. And I'm not... A, I was never a fan of the series back when I was a teen. But um, I did see it come on a couple of times. And I, I watched a couple of episodes. The one I remember the most was that one where the whole town was asleep. Or they couldn't talk. That's right. They couldn't talk. And these creepy ass guys were coming into people's rooms and cutting them up and they couldn't scream so nobody could be like know that people were getting killed so it was really creepy but anyways guys yeah let me know what you think about this one and next up is kotobuki grand prix so this is a kart racing game and i picked this game up because i saw it for cheap and it looked interesting so i said you know what, a kart race i've never heard of let's let's try it out and um the game is all right you know it's it, I, it is i would consider it a budget game i won't consider it like a hidden gem or nothing like that but if you're into kart racers and you're looking for something that you never heard of this game will be right up your alley so i would say for around under around 10 bucks uh definitely pick this one up guys Here's the last Blade Part 2 from Pix and Love. So I got this, I want to say around three weeks ago, and I was going to do a separate unboxing video, but I figured I'd just put it in this video for you guys to check out. So if you guys don't know, out of all the weapon-based combat games that are 2D, The Last Blade is one of my favorites. Well, probably top is my top favorite. I like this over Samurai Showdown. And uh, Part 2 being the best in the series, uh, it is a freaking awesome game. I had to get this collection, so... What this comes with, what you can see here, it comes with a soundtrack. Now, as you can see here, this is not a jewel case soundtrack. Uh, they're starting to put them in these sleeves. So I talked about that earlier. Uh, very cool. I love the art on the back. And here are the cards that come with it. These, these are like a, for each, they have like art of each character on them. And um, I think they're pretty cool. I like this type of stuff. Here's the art card for my favorite character, Semenosuke. Man, he is badass. He was the final boss in the first game, and he's back in the second game as a regular character. He's still very powerful, though, so don't sleep on him. Here's the art book. Very well done. Just pick some love, man. I'm really, really happy to have their products, man. I'm very impressed with what they put out. One of the things I've always liked about this game is the sense of balance it has. You know, I never felt like characters were too overpowered. I felt like everything was just right. If you like fighting games, you definitely owe it to yourself to play The Last Blade Part 2. You seriously won't regret it. At least, if you fight me, you will. But other than that, you'll be okay. Alright, so next up is Shadow Gangs by Wave Studios. So, I got this game and it reminds me of Shinobi, like a modern Shinobi. You pretty much play as a guy that he's like a gang member, like throwing like ninja stars at people. He gets power ups and then he turns into like a ninja. It's, it's pretty crazy. And he's like has a, like an Uzi and everything. I thought this was like a, definitely a really cool throwback. I don't I don't know if anybody's really heard of this game, but um, if you see this one out there, you definitely might want to pick it up if you're an old school fan. Here's Fist of the North Star for the PS1. So I got to play this game when I was in Korea. And man, I was so impressed with it because it was fully voice acted. Now I couldn't understand it because it was Japanese, but I was still enjoying the story. So basically this game goes over the first season 
uh, uh, our first series of Fist of the North Star, like all the way to Rao, and it's pretty dramatic. I mean, man, I was. Some of the moments in this game were like pretty epic, man. The voice acting was very well done. I remember the part where Toki actually fights Rao, and I was like, man, why, why, why am I not winning? And you know, it's like, what the heck is going on? I'm winning, but I'm not winning. It, it's pretty crazy. But you get to switch uh, to other characters as you get further in the game. So um, that pre if you've seen the series of Fist of the North Star, you'll know what you're in for. Definitely a lot of fun. The only thing you get to remember in this game is try to remember combinations like finishing moves and just regular combinations during fights to make things easier. Alright, and finally we have Poppin' Tank. So if you haven't heard of this game before, this is a tank combat game where you fight one-on-one -on -one with your opponent. And it really reminds me, which is kind of weird to say, but it reminds me of Mega Man Legends. Not the controls or anything, but just how the graphics are, the 3D graphics and the combat just really reminds me of that game. And the misadventures of Tron Bond as well. The game is very colorful, and I, it has some anime cutscenes in it too, which is always a plus for me. Um, I, I'm trying to remember when this game came out. I think it came out in 1999, and I remember vaguely seeing it uh, around that time, but... It was one of those games that didn't come to America, but that's okay. You don't really need this game to be in English to enjoy it, so... Um, Really happy I got this game. I'm still playing. I actually just got it, so I barely got it into this video. Uh, but man, I'm, I'm just so excited for this one, man. It's, it's been a while. I didn't think I would ever own this one because the price had went up to almost like, they were trying to charge like $250 for this game, which is pretty insane. But anyways, guys, um, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Kyle, man. Thanks for looking out for me, bro. I really appreciate you, man. These games are awesome. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. This one was kind of like a weird one to get out because I, I kind of just, I wanted, I'm behind on videos and I want to get like a lot of these pickups videos done like on my channel. So I had to push this one out. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we went to the hour limit or it says an hour. Yeah, we're almost to an hour. So um, yeah, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching Radical Reggie and I'll see you all in the next video.